Hey friends, here with astrologer Deborah Silverman, and we are talking all about how astrology can actually heal you, help you find yourself. This is definitely my favorite astrology conversation to date, and I learned so much. Deborah, anything to add? Just that two little Geminis sitting on a computer had a party. We'd love to invite you to come <laughs> join us because you cannot be around two little Geminis and not have fun. Yes, and wait, what did Carl, Carl Jung say? He said that psychology will be a dinosaur science without astrology. So friends, you need to know all that Deborah's teaching us today. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Push the button. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote for today, life just wants you to learn and to grow and to keep your heart wide open. That is from Deborah Silverman, Hill Squad. What's up? Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be chatting with renowned astrologer Deborah Silverman, who just gave us that quote about astrology, how we can use astrology, the meaning of different signs and placements in your chart, and what this week's full moon will bring us. Hopefully, good things. All the good things, exactly. <laughs> All the good things. It's funny that this quote is about learning and growing. My friend Joe uh, surprised me and came and visited and he had a son with him who's five years old. And we were in the pool and, you know, just chilling on our awesome little front gate rafts. <laughs> and he said something, he said, you know, them were telling me, I said, it's they. And he looked and he got so upset that I corrected him. Oh, no. And I said, Andrew, I said, you know, don't get upset. I said, I'm just trying to help you learn. I said, listen, I'm 44 and I'm still learning. And you've got another 95, at least years <laughs> of learning. So you gotta, you gotta start realizing that every day there's going to be something to learn. He's like, Oh, okay. And so I took him through the garden and I was teaching him about the garden and about eating greens. And it just reminds me of how diets are, are just really not, um, taken into consideration and people just don't know. That's why when we say that when you know better, you get better. My friend Joe did, doesn't really know how to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. He never really learned. So then, mm -hmm. you know, his son isn't eating healthy. So it's either pancakes, cheeseburgers, French fries. I go, Andrew, we need to start eating a lot of green things to get strong and healthy. He's like, yeah. So then I then later I'll say, okay, what did we learn today? Eat green things. Yep. <laughs> By so the time cute. they were gone, he was eating lima beans oh and he gosh. loved them. He ate shrimp scampi and he loved it. Not that that's like super healthy or anything, but um, he was open to trying things, which was cool and broccoli and all kinds of stuff. So I love it. It's pretty fun. That's the thing I also love about kids. And I try like, if I'm ever like, fighting something I'm like okay get like get to that child mindset right like they're they're down to do anything and everything they'll mm -hmm. try it they're like they're open so I think that's so cool I love it yeah sweet it was true. so interesting being with uh, a little kid I don't I haven't been with a little kid in a long time and I just watch how Kevin and I are just like obnoxious teachers. I don't know. Like all we do is teach. <laughs> you're like, you and Pooja are like, yeah, I know we hear it all the time, but it's good. But it's good teaching. It's hard not to. It's what we, you know, we just like sharing and, mm -hmm. and it was interesting to watch it with a kid. And then I said, it was funny. So he got really pouty at dinner and we're at this like really nice restaurant and he's getting really pouty. Now he's five. He's probably tired. Yeah. And I noticed that I was getting triggered. Oh, interesting. And it was because every time we went out, the few times we did go out, whether it was when we went to Greece or Disney or church on a Sunday, my brother always was pouting and miserable. And it was always about his mood or whatever was going on. And I was never like that. And so... <laughs> I got a little triggered and I asked my friend, Joe, I said, Joe, I don't know anything about having kids. I need to ask you now. I said, what, what is that like? I said, because I got triggered. He goes, I get triggered too. He's like, but it's your baby. And he said, you have to understand they're young and they don't know any better. And 
you have to have patience. And I'm like, oh my God, you grew <laughs> like a set of patience <laughs> overnight because you were not yeah. patient before. And I've known you for over 20 years. <laughs> and it's just so funny. I was like, do you think we can do this? Cause like, he's one of the closest people in my life. And it's funny right. that it's a guy and I'm asking him for advice. I go, do you really think we can do this? He goes, oh my God. Yes. He goes, first of all, Kevin's going to be amazing. And then he's like, you know, he, he just, he, he made me understand what everybody always says, which is it's different when it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. And it was pretty, pretty fascinating to watch someone that you've known for so long shift and change so quickly and all in the name of love. Like Ooh, it's yeah. so beautiful. And, you know, this wasn't something that was expected. And I remember he would drive me to E. He drove me everywhere. And we were telling his son everything. I'm like, we've been to Super Bowls together. We've been on private planes together. He came to WrestleMania with me. He drove me to Dancing with the Stars with foot baths because my feet were broken. And oh like we told him all the stories. And uh, and it's just it's just so wild to see the transformation of somebody um, I don't know. I just lost my train of thought, but well, and g- going, I think kind of where you were going, it's like you, it's, it was ironic for you to ask Joe for that advice and for that help yeah. because you didn't see him as that person, but now you see him in that place and he's killing it and he's crushing it. I think crushing it. I, I was that. so proud of him. I go, you are an amazing dad. Yes. We all have more. We have to learn and more. We kind of know, and you're going to feed him more greens and all of that. But it's like, it's first of all, being a parent is like the hardest job in the world. People say it all the time, but when you watch someone in action, you realize how much parenting really is. And I'm not going to lie. Kevin and I kind of looked at each other at one point. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait a second. Maybe that ship is sailed. I don't know. I don't know. This is a lot of work, but no, um, you guys will be so good. It just like, it comes. I feel like, and Joe probably was saying this too. I know my mom was like, you just, you learn, you have to learn. You have to learn like when they're there. And I feel like you and Kevin are going to be so good. You already, yeah, you already teach, you already coach, but it's just like when it's yours, you love, you love it differently. You love them differently. So you just, you, but they know, can you make be it happen. so annoying. I mean, yeah, they can. <laughs> my mom just used to, <laughs> my mom would ignore us. My mom literally, really? oh yeah, she would be like, yeah. Is that why you, you're so loud now? Yeah, like, probably. You needed attention. I so did. you would. A hundred percent. By the way, <laughs> my parents didn't ignore me. They just were working like cats and dogs, like all day, cats and dogs, like dogs all day. So I had to beg for attention yeah. too. That's why I know. You and I both yell. No, she, I mean, <laughs> no, you guys will be so good. Not yell, but we're big. Yes. We're loud. We're, we're like yes. very attention. Yes. I think part of, part of it, and Deborah will probably talk about this with your chart. Part of it is you and I came out of the womb that way. But yes, definitely elements of hi, wait, oh wait, no, me, hi, me. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's so it's so wild when you really see the gravity of they're with you 24-7. Yeah. Now, granted, I am really lucky that I know I'll be able to have help. Joe doesn't have help and he's doing it. So I'm like, okay, we, we can do this. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is going to be great. And by the way, maybe your squad will get bigger. Pooja, Kelsey, Winnie, and, and babies. Oh, hell yeah. Both Pooja we'll and I a bigger love office. kids. Okay, great. Pooja <laughs> and I are obsessed with kids. So we're, <laughs> we're game. We're in sign us up. Pooja, you love kids too. I love kids. I wanted to be a, like a kindergarten teacher for so long. I love, love, love kids. <laughs> yeah, she you would have them. been amazing. Oh, I love them. You're I so love like, them gentle. so much. We I taught little kids art in high school. That was like my job to make money in the summers. Oh, and it was the best thing in the world. It was. Wow. Do you want to have kids of your own? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I grew up with like, there's four of us and I like loved it. And I want. Do you I think you're going to be a younger mom or what do you think you're going to do? No, I think I'm definitely going to wait till I'm older. That's what like, yeah, like at least 30 something. Yeah. And I feel that's like that's, kind that's, of how, that's how I feel. Yeah. I like I've always wanted them, but I definitely am like, I even joke now. I'm like, give me 10 years. I'm like, I'm a good 38, 40 down, live my life first. And then I think it's I perfect. Yeah. I'm like, 
I don't, I look at some of my friends who have them now and I'm like, uh, no, 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 no. So I'm like, give me 10 years, but I will have them eventually. And I'll just mm-hmm. take care of yours um, until then. We'll play yeah, with them until now. Exactly. <laughs> or until then. Listen, I am down. It takes a village. I mean, back in the day, that's how it was. They did have villages for people to tell help. So I want, I want to build another place on this property and then just have it be the compound. Yes. <laughs> it's just, and then they'd be like, oh, run a Papu's, run a grandpa's house, and run yeah. here and run there. Oh, I love it. Meanwhile, I'm getting the most amazing photos of my dad in Greece. He is oh. living his best life. Every time I get a picture of him, he's actually wearing sunglasses, which is very uncharacteristic for him, <laughs> but he is just like soaking in life. And it just is giving me so much life right now. Every time I see them. Oh, that's really happy. And the summer of heel continues. And the summer of heel continues friends. I'm still waking up at sunrise or just before sunrise and going outside and getting my, um, less than 15 degree sun to build my solar callus. And I've been picking blueberries off the tree for my coconut yogurt. P.S. There was a Robin stuck to the, like the netting around it today. Oh my God. So I was like going in for the rescue and I think it got (laughs) so nervous to figured its own way out of it. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, it's been a really nice time here. And I'm really, really grateful that I'm getting this time here. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I am continuing my summer of heel. I went to mm-hmm. the beach yesterday by myself, threw myself in the water, literally just lay, like you and I are the same. Like you love the water and the beach like I do. Oh my God. I just was like itching yesterday. And I was like, you got to get out. It's 20 minutes. I drove there. It was so happy. And I mm-hmm. just swam alone. I like floated. Oh my God. It was so nice. It was so nice. Had that a great, sounds good. oh, so good. And my parents right now are on a cruise. So I'm feeling a little orphaned because they can't use their phone. Yeah. So it was good. I was like, I had to be with my own thoughts instead of call my mother. <laughs> so we're healing over here too. I miss, I miss that. That's like such a hard thing. Like when you don't have your mom to call, it's like, I used to call her every single day. Right. I know when it's like you have that pause. Now I I just kind of talk to the Mm. the room, the sky. You still do do that? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Mm, It's hard though. Oh man. Anyhow. All right. Let's start chatting with Deborah Silverman. Like I told you friends, she is an astrologer who brings concrete and practical astrology to the everyday person. She has developed a unique psychological spiritual model, combining her expertise in astrology with her extensive education and her background in psychology. Uh, What makes her different isn't just how honest she is in her direct style, but she's fun and she's got a non-traditional way that breathes new life into this ancient practice. She's been doing it for over 40 years. And her goal is to help those going through major life changes and help them heal while making them laugh. We are very excited to chat with Deborah Silverman today. So when we come right back, we'll be laughing and learning all about astrology. Um, Deborah, thank you so much for, for being with us today. I'm so excited. Kelsey said uh, she was telling me a little bit about your style, and it sounds a little bit different than some of the other astrologers that we've had on um, especially where you have a psychology background and you're a Gemini, which means you're fun. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what got you into this and, and why you think you're different from other astrologers. What got me into this is my dysfunctional family. <laughs> that was the original entrance, both as a psychotherapist and as an astrologer, just looking at these people wondering what is wrong or well, that's not a good way to put it, but it was kind of how I was thinking, what's wrong with you? So I studied astrology indirectly through studying my family and then doing psychology. And then I've been obsessed since I was a kid. And part of my gift is talking English because it's such a highfalutin abstract theory that the plan, like I came to it as a skeptic. At first I was like, come on, like, why do the planets affect us? It makes no sense. But then as I've gone year after year after year, seeing every single session that I do is so revealing and speak so much to someone's purpose or their quirks or why they don't get along with someone that I realized 
we're, there's no more arguing. So now I'm a firm believer. I came as a skeptic and I make my practice to speak English so people can actually see the value, particularly of the elements. That's part of my conversation. I've written a book called The Missing Element, and it really helps people figure out without the astrology, what is my predominant elemental constitution and then how do I balance it? So I've just been passionate this lifetime about wanting people to fall in love, like wanting them to live in a state of self-appreciation and stop being so mean. I love that. Deborah, what were your credentials in the psychotherapy and all of that kind of world? I'm curious. I have a master's in clinical psychology. So I went to graduate school and pretended I was normal. Not so good. And then I brought the astrology to the table and my professors were like, huh? Because this was way back. I'm way older than I look. So we're talking like 40 years ago, 45 years ago. And, um, and they really resisted me to start with, but I was ahead of my time. And then came to find out that Carl Jung, who was the original psychiatrist in the 30s, was an astrologer. And he no could, and he's, he was quoted to say, psychology will be a dinosaur science until it includes astrology. Because when people start trying to rearrange their psyche without the spiritual angle of what was God's intention, you're just moving furniture around. You're not getting underneath to what your purpose is. Why do you have these crazy personalities? We ask. Wow. I just got the chills. I, I love that you, you tried going the normal way, by the way, I found this amazing sweatshirt and it's uh, I think it's this Homer Simpson saying now everyone just pretend we're a normal family. (laughs) (laughs) My favorite line is normal. So setting on a dryer. Oh my God. Yes. So, so you went the traditional way to kind of figure out your family and your life and why and the why, and then you happened upon astrology as a skeptic and then got into it. I'll tell you, the more I've done in astrology in terms of like a patron of astrology, the more I've understood myself because it isn't just, you know, like a horoscope or any of that, like you understand why you are the way you are. Like there are, there are actual reasons and some things that you can't put into words now get put into words. And you're like, Oh my God, that's it. That's why freedom means so much to me, but I didn't know freedom meant so much to me because I never used the word freedom, but that is like a very dominant thing for me. And if I didn't have my chart read, um, I would never know that. And so much more. Exactly right. So I'm looking at your chart. You have so much sensitivity in your chart. So even though you're a Gemini who's such a great communicator and so entertaining, and obviously you've had a huge success, there's an inner world to you that people don't know about that is so sensitive. And so when I can distinguish the predominant ego structure as distinct from your soul, because your soul is water, you're super sensitive, don't tell anyone, but you've got the super (laughs) sensitive. And then you have this really strong articulating, communicating. So the distinction to be spoken to, to your point, to put words to it, it's like, oh, so I can have two parts of me. So the Gemini, no, you could have 20 parts of you. But there's one part that's super sensitive and internal and cares so much. And the other part's so detached. She's like, can we go now? And they, they are a ping pong game. Yes, yes. But isn't that, I mean, we had Deepak Chopra on uh, at some point, And one of the things that stuck with me was about polarity. And isn't that just polarity? Doesn't everyone have that? No. And I, by the way, I've given him a reading too. I've had some very um, profound people come into my space to be able to. Wow. Um, yes. Polar- There's two sides to the brain. So we operate clearly this whole world, the sun and the moon, the day and the night, the men and women, like the whole system and this reality is the existence of polarity. But some people are congruent. So if they had lots of water like you do, they're nonverbal and they live inside their house and they cuddle and they just want to cook and play house. You have that in spades. But you also have, because you're a Gemini, this excessive need to share with people every <laughs> We were just talking about that. My friend brought his son over recently and I was like, oh my God, we're such obnoxious teachers, my husband and I, all we do is share and share and share. Right. So there is a duality, yes, in the brain, but then there's personality traits that really stand out by looking at the chart and being able to articulate that. So the person really feels understood. And you have something in your chart that is um, something of a mystic, like your chart speaks to this high developed sensitivity and also a very whimsical. You must, did you dance at all when you were young? 
I didn't, but I got to do it as an adult on Dancing with the Stars. And it was like the greatest feeling in the whole world. Yeah, you're built for that. Oh my God, that's yeah. that's so you. Like you have a fluid moving mobile, but part of your compulsion in your chart is that sensitivity to being a mom, for example, and playing house. I know, I love being home, but I also am so confused because I don't want to be home when I'm home sometimes. I just want to be out. That's the polarity. I'm very confused, but that's a Gemini. Gemini, hello. But here's what you do. You give yourself permission when you study. I have a school and people come in and they know nothing, right? So they just think they're a Gemini and they're slightly confused. Then did you know your Pisces? (laughs) Did you know your Pisces rising? Yes. So so your soul's water, which means that you can shape shift for whoever you're with. Like you Mm -hmm. literally can go into somebody else's skin and like- I have. Yeah. I have. What are you doing in there? You know, what's so crazy, Deborah, when you said the mystic stuff, a friend of mine witnessed something. I, and I may have mentioned this on the show before, but my uncle was really, really sick with COVID and I went to visit him and I was helping. And I think he instantly saw that. And he had seen me take care of my mom. He instantly trusted me. And at some point when I left, my, my cousins were texting me. They said, he's screaming your name. So I FaceTimed him. And I'm in the car with two friends in the back. And, uh, and he's like, can't breathe, can't breathe. And he couldn't speak English well. And I started praying with him because I knew that would calm him. And then I said, huh, let me breathe for him. So I went in his body and I could see the hospital gown on top of me. And I was breathing through, I had him breathe through my lungs as his lungs and we were breathing together and he went to sleep. He was having a full blown panic attack. And my friend looked at me and he said, that's straight up mystic shit. That's what he said, that was his quote. And they go, oh, I don't know what that means technically, but I'm just glad it worked. And so no, yeah, it's exactly funny. what I'm talking about. You can go outside the boundaries. So, so what, is, what is a mystic? Someone that is not attached to the, the practical world with the same definitions that we have. So mystics lived in temples and they did chanting and they went into healing people and they had this gift of leaving their own inner world to go into the other. And that is exactly what you just described. That's called Neptune, just so you know. And it was found, you're going to love this because it's your career. It was found when they found cameras in the 1890s that we could use a camera to tell a story. And if I say Toto, you think about the Wizard of Oz and that's all in a man. It's imagination. The mystic lives in an imaginary world and you mm-hmm. have it a lot in your chart. It's on the very top of your chart. When you were born, Neptune was standing right above the hospital bed, like literally on the top of the sky, which is the filmmaker, the storyteller, yeah. the dancer, the person that can actually leave this world. But then that's a little scary. You know, you got to learn those skills. Yeah. Well, you got to learn how to protect yourself too. But praying is the short answer. The simple answer for Neptune is putting yourself in the arms or the hands of the angels or spirit. And then suddenly magic appears. That's what you do. So for anyone who's listening that can resonate with that experience, because I know we have a lot of healers who listen to the show. Um, and if they feel like they have this, how, how do you channel that properly? And what do you do with that? If you kind of are like, yeah, I think I have that. I think I am that. Okay. So it's called water in my book, the missing element, you have four count them four planets in water. So I talk astrology super simple. There's four elements, like four wheels in a car. And if one of the elements is down, the car doesn't drive well. Well, your car <laughs> has a lot in the water element, which is feeling other people, caring about people, really having compassion before you even have your own sensibility. Like you're feeling for the other before you feel for yourself. So how do you learn to manage that? You take classes. This is part of my school, like learning how to meditate so that you can stop the world and go in and reclaim your inner world. So you're not bleeding. You're not losing your boundaries. You're not feeling overwhelmed by the mall or the airport or the theater. Because for you, it's like, oh my God, I'm being assaulted because you're feeling, so water people must learn permission to come home, to stay in your little room, to put on your favorite music and to create safety internally before you go out. And then that the next step after you become self-aware is to become the healer and then open the door and say, come on into my system. Like with your uncle, I will match you. I'll show you how to breathe. Then I got to stop and learning how to unplug cut the cords, go back into your own center. Cause otherwise you lose your boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. I had, um, 
Judy Wilkins Smith told me I'm a messy empath. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's the best way I've I ever said, heard. I said, yeah, I think you're right. So it's a skill set in the name of water. And those people that are watching, you cry at the commercials. You're super moody. You save things underneath the bed. You have this favorite cousin's you know, scarf that he gave you when you were six that you never threw away. Like there's a lot of cluttering and saving. That's the messy part. Mm. But the high road is the Dalai Lama is all water. And what does he do for a living? He meditates with compassion for the very people that hurt him. Mm-hmm. That's the high road. The low road is, oi. You won't believe what happened to me. That's the low road of water. So then the next category is air, which is what you and I have. And they are the ones that talk all the time. And they're so curious. And this is, so water is Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. But you don't have to be that sign. Like you are not obviously that sign, but you've got so much more water in your chart. Air is the Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. They talk and they think and they're so funny and they're so witty and they can't remember their name and they can't make a decision and they don't know what's going on because they're slightly confused and they're reading three books and they can't remember where the books are and they lost their (laughs) And they tickle themselves all day. They think everything is the funniest thing and they're like little kids that are airheads. That's air. And what were the water signs? Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And you have all three of them in your chart. Yeah. All three water signs, you have a lot of water. Then comes air, and these are, that's what you and I are. Like, can we, I talk all day, I talk about nothing. That's what a friend told me one day. He was like, I, I couldn't go to this party. And he came home, and I said, how was the party? He said, oh, they talk all night, they talk about nothing. Like, you know, people just talk, and they use their yeah. hands, and they're super social, and they listen to podcasts, and they read books, and they don't finish them, and they forget where they're going. And it's, a, you know, but there's a fun factor, because... They never stop asking questions like you. Mm-hmm. So there's yeah. the element. And you obviously have that. That is, It's a predominant influence in your chart because you've got three planets in error. And then we get to Earth, which, by the way, you have no planets in Earth. Don't tell anyone. You've got zero. And here's what Earth is. Money and numbers and practicality and being on time and taking care of your taxes and cleaning and doing all the organization and making sure everything is done with its little list, like going to Costco. Earth people love going to Costco. Like, oh, there's three little Windexes in a package. Like they get off on that. Kill me. (laughs) And I was like, somebody else go to Windex. I'm not doing it. So you have no earth. Can you relate to that? Can does that feel like it's an unfamiliar land? Yeah, I think, I think all of it resonates. I just, I do think, so does that mean I'm not good with money or people who don't have earth are not good with money? Cause I am good with money. What happens when you're missing it is it becomes a preoccupation. So, you know, you need to focus on it Mm. because it's scary for you. So it becomes a fixation. Either they're super good at it or they're super bad at it, but it's always an extreme. Like I must feel secure. says someone with no earth in their chart. Yeah, like organization is hard, but I really focus hard on it. I try so hard. (laughs) So you've learned to take your missing element and grow it. And that's what the book is about. Once you take the test and you figure out what's missing, then you grow that part and it balances. And then the last one is fire. And that's the fun factor. Those are the loud people that get super excited. Before you go to that one, if you don't have earth, would grounding be important for you? Oh, yeah. Is that a joke? Yes, that was a yes. Yeah, that's just Taurus. making sure everyone hears that. That's Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Now, you don't have to be an earth sign to be able to relate to these. So I don't want you to get stuck on your sun sign because when you study astrology, there's way more involved. But the elements are the grassroots, literally. <laughs> they're, <laughs> the, they're the ground level of how you start to study this material. And my book, The Missing Element, has no astrology in it. It's just figuring out earth is, yes, you must learn to ground, which means ritualistic behavior, routines, being very deliberate to put something back where you found it because you forget little Gemini. You're like, where did I put that? So you learn Mm -hmm. the skill. So good for you. And then last, Aries, Leo, Sag, these are the people that are super funny, loud, obnoxious at worst. They run around. Someone just asked me, one of your people on this, what did I do yesterday? I'm, I have a lot of fire on my bike. And then I go play tennis and then I'm jumping off the cliff. And so fire people are super enthusiastic but there's no off button. So they're loud. They're strong. They drink too much. They eat too much. They party too much. You're like, is there a volume knob on this kid? So that one, the high road of fire is they're inspirational. The low road is they're a little bit loud. So you take all Mm. four. The goal of the game, of course, is you want all four because you can't drive the car without the four wheels. And you look at your chart and you go, oh, look, you particularly have such a gift as a mystic. Who would have thought that a Gemini would be as sensitive as you are. 
Is that something that's uncommon? Totally. Geminis are cut off. And by the <laughs> way, Deepak, Deepak is double air. He lives in his head. Yeah. So everything's intellectual. That's air. He's a very good example of air. Whereas for you, you want to feel it. You want to cuddle. Mm-hmm. You want somebody, you want the dog and the partner and your best friend right near you. Whereas air is like, can you go now? I'm reading. <laughs> They're kind of pointed yeah. at their worst air people. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So if you, so for me, for example, I have a lot of water. I have air. I have no ground. Did I have any fire? Yes. <laughs> you have any okay. fire. You will perform or you, yes. Yeah, I would assume. So now that means one tire is not, is missing. And so if a tire is missing off your car, the job is to go to the nearest, that tire, up. Store. Go to the nearest tire store and go get it. Yeah. You grow it. You look like you just said it. You work hard at organization. It's not natural to you. Yeah. But once you balance, this is the whole thing in this life. Cause I'm much older than I look. It took me so many years to figure out because I was missing earth too, Gemini. It wasn't my strong suit. Like taxes, like with taxes, receipts. Oh I don't know what a receipt is. <laughs> like I, I threw the receipt out when she gave it to me. So so then I had to learn, up, back up the bus. This is a skill set, Deborah. And I've learned it now. And I run a business. I have many women that are in my school that teach. And, and now I can proudly say that I've cultivated the missing element. And so if you have a tire that's off and you're, clunking along, what are the things you would feel? I mean, obviously you'd feel out of balance, right? Something just wouldn't be right in your life. How long does it take to you can get in a balance? I mean, you tell you're me, not good you, with money. How, how did you, you figure know? out to get or Like, what have you done to cultivate organization besides hiring oh, people? Man. <laughs> like I said, I really, I really try hard. I'll never forget when we were moving out of our first house, my husband was emptying out my desk and he found maybe 5,000 to-do lists. And he he looked at me, started tearing. He goes, you poor thing. I feel so bad, genuinely felt bad because he just saw how much I tried and I was trying to hold everything together and it was so hard. But my parents aren't really organized. My parents are super creative, super hard workers, um, but they were hot messes in that category too. So, um, I never learned it, but he's really organized. So he's helped me. He's a Scorpio, November 18th. Right. So, so when you find, this is a classical story. So you found a very organized being. This classically happens when I work with couples, you find someone who balances you and then you So is the Scorpio grounding he's earth. He must have some earth in his chart. If he's very good, if it's not, as you know, now it's not just sun sign the rising sign is your soul it's I called see, rising yeah, sign for the ascendant why is it called people always confuse this the rising sign is because you're moving so your rising sign is pisces which is the absolute sweetest kindest most confused sign of the zodiac i mean they have so many ideas and they're always <laughs> so many and Wait, so, I have 50 lists of ideas too. <laughs> exactly. So then you have to find someone that grounds and that would be your husband. And we we hire people, we have best friends. There's this very important in astrology, knowing compatibility and how to compliment and teach us. I, you know, we all have to learn. We come down here. This is a volunteer position. Nobody pushed you on the bus. You come to earth with that chart and that funny family that was an assignment and that funny body, because everyone's got one. And then you have to figure out how to navigate with wisdom. And that's what astrology, the oldest science on earth. And it starts with the elements. The elements are given to us by the ancestors. I live in Hawaii half the year and I study hula and it's all based on every religion. The old ancient Jews had the four worlds. The Buddhists have the four principles they live by. The American Indians had the four directions. Every culture knew that four was the stability and that's the element. So it stands on that. And once you get balanced, life gets really magical. But what this is the symptom. Here's what I think the question you're asking. If your water's out of balance, you're depressed. Like the low level of water is poor me. Mm. If air is out of balance, you're confused. You can't make a decision. You can't commit. You can't do relationship because there's too many options. You got a new idea and a new partner. If you're balanced, unbalanced at earth, you can't keep your shit together. Like those lists don't get done and you don't know how to ground. And if you don't have fire, you forget about the fun factor and there goes the orgasm. And then like, we're miserable. 
That was supposed to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed. Oh, I got so sad when I was thinking about all the dysfunction. Kelsey, jump in. Oh, I was laughing at that. I'm just looking at mine and I'm like, this makes so much sense. I have so much freaking water in my chart. It is unbelievable. I'm also Pisces sun, but Leo rising. That's where I get my little bit of fire, but then Scorpio that's moon. Good catch, oh God. Yeah. This is making, I'm like, wow. I need so this is the simplest out. entrance level for even the advanced astrologers. I always say, come back to basics because I always tell everybody I'm a little slow. You can't tell by looking, but when I get something grounded to your point about, then I can really apply this and spirituality becomes real. And that's my promise this life, to make people understand. That's what my school does. I hate theory. After well, I mean, I love it because I'm a Gemini. I could spend forever thinking about things. But I love to see that it grows things, that it actually gets results, that people's lives change. It's funny you say that because I was just going to ask you, what are some of the examples of kind of transformation that you've seen that has been inspiring once someone found astrology and able to, was able to apply it properly? So I'm thinking about, I used to teach, I don't teach anymore. Now I have a school with lots of teachers, but the first class, this woman that suddenly eventually worked for us, she came in the first class, super shy, a Taurus, self-conscious sitting. And I looked at her chart and I was like, "Uh oh, she had so much fire in her chart. And I was like, wait a minute, you're hiding behind some old story that you can't show up. And before you knew it, she started exercising. She lost weight. Her husband wrote me. It was like she was she had identified so much with her low self that she'd lost. And as soon as it activated, she became one of our best teachers. She became one of our best astrologers. And she was hiding under this ego structure of, you know, that little shy thing that Tauruses do where they don't feel good enough. Well, astrology changed all that. Wait, Deborah, I just got the chills. So this could potentially be another way to deal with trauma because technically that was maybe a trauma that she took on and formed a belief around that she had to stay small and her bigness couldn't come out, which a lot of us get that, right? When you're big, you are too much for people and you intimidate them. And they have to shut you down. So they extinguish our fire, exactly which right. has happened my whole life. So I know it well. They extinguish the, the fire. And then you have to mute yourself so much just to survive. And then an astrologer looks at your chart and goes, come out, come out, wherever you are. So it gives you permission to reclaim. And that's what I'm telling you. Maria, so many students that I have seen have come in the school and then left the school back to their real self. And so I get like to these theories, people send me gifts all the time because they really, it's not theory. It really does change your life. But, it, and I teach it in very small. There's only 10 women in the class. The astrologer who's teaching you studied your chart before you got there. And it's six weeks long. And at the end of it, you're like, I can't believe I'm back to myself. And what are they teaching you in these six weeks? The very first class is the elements. So what we just talked about, you use this book, my favorite book, The Missing Element, um, uh -huh. and, they, and they give you homework. So you have to go, let's say you were missing fire like that woman. You've got to go outside, go for walks and sweat. If you don't do this in the next week, don't come back to clay. I mean, I'm kind of not mean, but I'm very like, don't spend your money unless you're going to change. The second okay. class is super interesting. And this is where um, the tires hit the ground. The second class is Mercury. I'm just going to look at yours. Yeah. So you have <laughs> your Mercury's in Gemini. So then we find out how the mind works and yours never stops. No, <laughs> like you're da, 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 and your memory and your thoughts and you're so curious and you've got so once you become the observer of your mercury of how your mind works just in one class, then we give you the gift called the observer. And this is also in my book where you look over at yourself and you go, oh, my God, can you just find the off button to that machine? And then you do become yeah. the aware part of yourself. And so the second class is all about the mindsets and how your chart describes what fixates specifically to your chart. Like with Chelsea, it's different because she's Pisces. So she's dreaming. So she has to have structure all the time. She has to, you are like free falling. You're like so many things interest you. You could just do a million interviews a day because your mind is never satisfied. It's like, like the Pac-Man. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. And so then you learn in the class, like, oh, that's interesting. I can separate myself from my mind. That's a revelation. Then the next class is your shadow. And we find out what in your unconscious is undermining you. And how do you do that? Uh, through the chart? 
Yep, that's called the North Node. Oh, I remember. And that is a really, and yours, ready? Yeah. Yours is trying to be super independent. Like what you do is you pretend like you're really a partnering person and all you want is to partner. But some part of you will go super independent if you're not careful. Am I right or am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. So that so we spent a whole class. So then we spent a whole class working with the North Node. It's I'm giving you the abbreviated version. Obviously, it's six weeks, and by the end, you learn your life lesson, and that's the most important conversation of all. Saturn, what did you come in this lifetime? At, and I know that Chelsea's is Pisces because we looked at her chart before you got here. Kelsey, Kelsey, and yours. Get ready. You're going to love this. <clears throat> yours is fire. Your life lesson is in Leo. How big can I be? How generous can I be? How uninhibited can I be without my water being so sensitive to the other person making a face at me? (laughs) (laughs) It's like she just put a dagger through my chest. (laughs) No, no, that was, I'm just naming it. I know, but you're right. You're right. I mean, that's your life lesson in Leo. How willing are you to stand up, stand out, and not notice the judgments from others? It's not your job to pay attention to them, but that's not an easy one. That's hard. Yeah. What's Kelsey's? I'm curious. Kelsey's is her hypersensitivity that she she really does give herself away all the time. And she becomes a workaholic and she becomes like overly busy because she's got so much sensitivity. She can't, her water doesn't want to sit still. Mm -hmm. I feel that. That so, makes a lot so of sense. It's simple. So my <laughs> whole with astrology is, and it's all over Instagram. I shouldn't make fun of astrology. It's all over Facebook. <laughs> There's a million trillion astrologers, but my system, because of the therapy, because of the psychology is just simplified. Like you can go on forever studying astrology, but where does it actually hit the ground? Like, does it actually, like that instance I just gave you, if I say to you, you have permission, Maria, to really be big, your life lesson mm-hmm. was Leo. And then you practice that even though you resist it because it hurts your feelings when they are mean to you or you hurt someone and then you're like, I'm out. But that's not your job. Your job is to stay in even when they get their feelings hurt. Oh my God. It's if I could hear this message like one more time, I, or if I had a dime for every time this message came to me, I'd be so, so wealthy. Even Judy Wilkins Smith, who was on the show recently, she's like, you are meant to be big. Stop playing small. And I'm like, but, you're water. It's just, but it's so beautiful because the water part of you is uh, able to cry. I hope you can cry easily. Can you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, so you never want to get too big at the expense of your humanness. At the same time, you don't want your humanness interrupting with your permission to really live a life. Like you came to eat this life alive with that Leo and your Mars is there. You have a little bit of a drama queen in you. Of course. My dad used to call me Hollywood growing up. Okay. Hollywood. (laughs) (laughs) It's only fitting that I went. (laughs) Oh, cute. So this is everyone listening. You all have a purpose here and you all have a chart that was based in the moment of your birth. And we have someone on our team that can rectify the chart if you don't know what birth time. And I do this game called matchmaking where I, someone sends us their chart and then I fix, I have like 20 astrologers that I've trained and I do this game and I have so much fun doing it. I look at the person's chart and then I do matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. And I put them together and then they have a really good experience. With an astrologer. So this is the most maybe exciting astrology conversation I think I've ever had. (laughs) And well, because I love the idea that we can help ourselves with this. I don't, I shouldn't say that I've always known that astrology helps you understand yourself and all that, but I see kind of the next level of it's not just understanding yourself. It's how it can help you have a better life and live a better life. So I wonder with there are different types. Like I, I had someone on who did Ayurvedic astrology. Are we able, like, is this something that people should do every six months? Because, you know, the planets are moving and, you know, like I know for me, I had the Ayurvedic astrologer told me that I had to wait two years and pay more karmic debt. So my karmic debts ended this April, I guess, and life was supposed to take off and it's been taking off and it's doing better. In some ways, in so some know, other this ways. Month in your chart, you are in a major change right this month. Can a you good one? A Can it really be a good, good one? A really good one. It's going to bring out your mystical, magical spirituality is calling your name. So don't miss, you're going to remember this. 
in the next three, four months, you're going to feel more introverted. And I all am. Time, Hello. Don't I haven't been seeing anybody. I've just been sitting in my backyard. I know. And that's going to go on. I'm warning you for the next two and a half years, you're going to notice the appetite you have is to have quiet. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean your career. In fact, it'll enrich in your inner world. And you'll now you'll remember you have so much um, water in your chart. This is a water cycle for the next two and a half years. It just started the last month. What does a water cycle mean? Well, that's water is tears. It's sensitivity. It's compassion. It's feeling like you want to be more creative at home. It's fertility. Like you're about to have babies. So that makes you are in the perfect time to almost have a baby. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Wow. So are you able in these charts to look at people's health carefully? Like, are we able to like really figure out because here's the thing that most of us want to know, is it going to get better? <laughs> and we want to know, is it going to get better in life, but then also in health too? So, so this is a difficult moment in time. I'm doing a keynote address this week at a um, climate crisis conversation, because as an astrologer, my job is to look at the time and look into the future. We are in a very difficult moment. Like there is no question that for the first time in, in our entire existence on this planet, we have 7.8 billion people here and it's on the rise. So we've never had this much static, this much awareness around what's mm-hmm. going on. So there's a requirement to your credit right now to sit in the backyard, find a peaceful state, and then yes, you'll get healthier, but you have to go in, you guys. The outer world is crumbling. That has nothing to do with your inner sense of quality, love, feeling healthy. Take care of yourselves. And there is a practice for fire people. They, for me, I got to exercise for water people. They have to sit still. They need to be at home. The air people need to research and write and take information in and listen to podcasts. They get so off on all that's healthy. And for the earth person, they like to clean. I don't understand those people, but they love organizing things. That's their nature. So Mm. the answer to the question is in order to make things better, become more and more yourself, get comfortable Mm. in your own skin, permission said the astrologer to be yourself because everyone else is taken. (laughs) I know being yourself is so hard sometimes. It's so I wonder with the fire thing is interesting. So if someone is fire and then they have to work out, I would think to balance you, you have to balance all of the elements, not just if the one that's missing, but the ones that you're dominant in. So if you're a dominant in fire, you'd have to do more water stuff or air stuff, right? You can't change the nature. Like if I say to you, you're going to stop talking. Your Gemini's just going, (laughs) please don't say that to me. That's so unnatural, right? It would be, of course. you, you have to, the gift of astrology is permission to be yourself. And then to your point, figure out the balance factor, but you can't say to someone who's a talker, you got to learn how to listen and stop talking. Like, okay, I'm reading about it, but I can't quite. So you follow your instinct Mm -hmm. and then you figure out the missing element and you balance and you study your chart and suddenly you find your health comes back. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have reclaimed their own internal comfort. That's the first step. We can't change this world by being tense, anxiety, depression, all those things that are everywhere right now, the trauma. How does it get Mm -hmm. healed? Well, guess what, guys? You are the healer. And astrology is a matrix that's passed the test of time, for God's sake. It's been here the longest science on the planet. And to be perfectly honest, I think it was designed by very high intelligence, but I can't find the number to call them and say, good job, or can we talk about this? My Um, compliments to the chef. (laughs) (laughs) Because I'm so, that's so funny. I'm so impressed with the creativity and the brilliance of the system, but Somehow, I don't know why they don't want their name on it. They would have told me I would have gone, you know, paid homage. Yeah. Well, man, this is so fascinating because I think for all of us, I guess this can be healing because it helps us understand ourselves, helps us get back to us. When you get back to us, you get back to equilibrium and then you can be healthier. Thank you. So what have you seen in terms of health transformations? When I was a kid, I had an ulcer because I didn't understand that I was sensitive. I was that detached Gemini 
who didn't know how to cry. I studied my chart and I was like, of course my stomach's upset. I'm swallowing all my, I never let myself cry. And then I went and got therapy. So you learn by your chart where your body, I mean, there is medical astrology, but simply put, someone who has lots of fire and is not moving energy gains weight. Someone who has lots of water and is feeling super sensitive and uses food for comfort gains mm. weight. But then you begin to realize, oh, and that's what you know you learn. Like my water requires me to actually be gentle with myself, and my fire requires me to move energy. And my earth says you must have ritual, and my air says research, honey. You know, like you got to do all I do is research. <laughs> all I do is research all day long. Kelsey, when she said, no wonder my gut hurts. I mean, she just, she just nailed you I with know. the emotions. I, know. I've, I've, I told Kelsey like a summer ago, I said, you have to figure out why you can't express your emotions. This is a problem for you. That's her life lesson. That's see that? her life lesson. Oh. Saturn's in water is her emotions. So as soon as you learn, that's what happens in level one. She will, she's going to take level one. As soon Heck as yeah, you yeah. realize that my life lessons, my emotions, and I'm sitting on them. No wonder my stomach hurts. Wow. Damn. Kelsey. I feel that to my core. But then you I know so, what? Go ahead. It's, yeah. It reminds me of like when I was at Dr. Joe Dispenza. Some of the stuff really is in line with that. I love and, it. Right. And so the meditating, getting back to you and catching the thoughts. And with Kelsey, I feel like um, it's it's so fascinating because if you can focus on your life's lesson, you're going to heal your stomach, not just with the physical stuff, right? Like I feel, I always say we have to walk both paths at the same time. You can do the spiritual stuff, but you also got to do the physical stuff on this plane. Cause we're on this plane, right? So she's doing all the physical stuff and it's not all working. And it's because she has to add this next layer in. Yeah. Bingo. Who needs me when we got you? You're nailing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's I have to do the same thing, which is is fascinating. So my life's lesson is to be big and bold without I, worrying about people. Uninhibited joy. You promise to be our example of what it is to be dancing at the stars. Like turn up the volume and know you're doing your purpose. And whether we like it or not, it's not the point. You're fulfilling your purpose by following your Saturn, which is in fire. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think Can I ask a question, Deborah? Purpose. I love it. So yes. for someone who wants to, uh, they're looking at their chart and they're like, I want to know my purpose. And it's like, I was looking at, you know, my sister's hers is Aquarius. Like how, do, how do they find out what that means then? It's your Neptune, right? <laughs> no, it's not her Neptune. <laughs> it's so funny. I love when people start talking to astrology. First of Wait, all, is it, didn't you say the Neptune is the one that is Saturn? Is the Saturn. Saturn. Sat Neptune is oh, the Saturn. Saturn. Neptune was the party that went into your uncle. <laughs> Neptune's oh, like the, oh, the mystic. Yeah. Saturn is the hard concrete. That's the, her question is how do we assist her to understand it? Mm -hmm. So she would go read about Saturn and Aquarius, but Got that's it. why the school is so important. I don't know why in schools, I mean, I get this. I got the privilege of working in a school. One year, my son was in a private school in an exchange. They let me go to every classroom. I pretended I was Harry Potter's assistant. I put all the kids in the elements. So the water kids were sitting here and the air kids were sitting there. And I described the four elements and the little kids were so cute. And the little kid raised his hand and he said, I think my mom's water, because when we left our old house, she cried. And when we got to our new house, she cried again. Is that water? <laughs> Oh, wow. That's so the kids so really cool. got it. But wouldn't it be cool if in the schools, they told you your life lesson? Oh my gosh. Yes. You would know how to fulfill your like life's work and your mission. And you'd have a, a North star to understand. A North star. So you're exactly right. So this is one of my dreams is bringing this information. I mean, it's just taking time. And in the future, there will be an inclusion to this mysterious magical world called astrology. It's the reason why it lasted so long is because it's real. So thank you for having me today because this is my yeah. dream to support people to see the practical, simple language. I have every day on Instagram, I have a video that comes out that says where the moon is just to start following the rhythms and know, oh, today's a day to go in, it's water. Or today is a day to go exercise, it's fire. And I follow, I really honor these natural rhythms. And I want others to do because that's my dream. How do you find where the moon is and know that? On Instagram every day. <laughs> oh, so do, where do you follow? 
on Deborah Silverman Astrology. Perfect. You just, you just go on Instagram and every day you'll see a video comes up and I give you the weather report for where the moon is. And the moon is so easy to, to follow. Deborah, with the full moon this week, what, what should we do? What can we expect? Great question. It's a strong, strong full moon. So the sun is in cancer and the moon. It's always, you know this, during a full moon, the sun and moon are always opposite. So you can literally look at the moon and you'll know on the full moon that the sun is 100 and 360, 180, right opposite. It's 180. So this particular opposition is between the desire we have to stay home and the desire we have to go out to work. And it's a classical female question when they have children, like, where do I go? And that conversation then requires us in the name of cancer sun, because that's what the cycle in we're in right now under this solar cycle, is to get quiet and to listen. Listen and silent have the same letters. In order to listen, you have to quiet your mind. And that's not easy to do. So during this full moon, it's a real invitation for us to listen to the quality of our desire to say to ourselves about our job. Do we love our job? Because that's the Capricorn moon. But am I balancing it with my home life? And that's the conversation of this weekend. I love that. So good. Damn. So much. I learned so much. This is why I love what I do. Does it say I'm addicted to learning and growing in there? (laughs) That is every Gemini's dream. I have the same dream. I love learning and I love reading and underlining things and watching YouTube and learning about it's like my favorite thing. That Gemini's are perpetually young because we're so innocent. We know and if everyone may everyone have the innocence to be open-minded enough to say to God or life or spirit, help me learn more about myself so I can serve this planet. So I can be there for my family and my job and my purpose here. And so if we all just learn, it's such a beautiful thing to keep our minds open. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing for us. So thank you, Marie. Look what you're doing for so many people. You tickle us and make us want to learn. Thank you. Oh, I love that. Wait, so is that a Gemini quality that we're always going to look younger than we are? Yes. We're like the little kids. Everything. I I go into the drugstore. I'm like, look at all the colors. And I'm like such a goofball. I sometimes I embarrass myself. Me too. I'm like, why am I so excited? My kids say this to me like, mom, we're just going to the grocery store. I'm like, I don't know the way they put all the things up there and the options. And let's try that. I always say I'm easily amused. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and that's why we're contagious. And that's why you're here. Yeah. Too. Aww, thank you. This is amazing. Deborah, thank you so much. You guys can find everything on her website, Deborah Silverman, astrology.com or Instagram at Deborah, Deborah Silverman underscore astrology. We'll put all of it in the summary. So it's easy for you here. <clears throat> and guess what? Guess what? In August, I have a 10 day immersion <clears throat> where it's free for 10 days. I'm having all these influencers. I don't even know how to tell you to sign up for it, but it's a gathering every day for an hour and a half of doing a prayer, looking at the chart and then talking to some interesting people. It's just coming up around the corner. You know? Okay, perfect. Well, I guess we'll go to your website and find out. Exactly. Um, Deborah, hopefully you will grace us with your presence again, because this was too <clears throat> much fun. And I know there's more to cover. I would love to. Oh my God. I love her. I know. So fun, Kelsey, right? Kelsey, great find. Thank you. Thank you. She's awesome. I know. And she's no BS. That's why I liked her. Like she's just, she just says it, but she's smart. She's like, says it in a different way. That's digestible. Like, yeah, that was yeah. really cool. Well, I love that she has a degree in in psychology and Agreed. was it psychology specifically yep. uh-huh. what was it mm-hmm. yeah Masters. and um and i love how she was a skeptic and i really just love how her mission is to help people get better it isn't just about you know astrology and here's your reading and here's your sign and all of that it really is about healing people and i can see the elements like i said of joe dispenza and all of these different practitioners we have and how she's blended all of this together to create a recipe. That's really great. And anybody who's listening that can take her class, I think it would be really, really cool. I'm not somebody that's, you know, here to promote this stuff technically, but I'm, I feel like that would be so bomb. Oh my gosh. I want to take it so badly. I already emailed to get on the wait list. Like, Oh yeah. I think it'd be amazing. Oh my God. That was fun. But so, I love how you're, you're so excited about it too. So it makes us so excited and like want to learn and you ask all the right questions. I literally, I'm like, 
I have so many th- notes that I'm like, now I want to go try and look at my friend's charts and be like, okay, here's your life purpose. Like, this is so oh fun. My God. Wait, will you it. look up Kevin's? Yeah, I need to, I'll need to get Kev's birth. The only thing I know about Kev's chart is he has a lot of water, a lot of water. He's like Aquarius moon, Scorpio sun. And I think he might be an Aquarius rising too. Like he's a lot of water. We got to so, look him up. Mm-hmm, we do. We, we need do. to understand him better. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Oh, that's so funny. Wow. This is so, so cool. Um, friends, if you are here for the first time, hit subscribe, join us every single day. Um, if you can leave us a podcast review on Apple podcast, we'll leave a link to that in the summary of this episode. We live for these and we live and die by them too, because, um, you know, it really helps people get to know what we're doing here. And if they see a lot of people loving it, that is always really great. Um, I also ask if you are going to leave a review, consider, sometimes I see people say, I love the show, but um, just know that when you give a low rating, it really hurts our score. And there's a way to give the constructive criticism. If you do love the show, um, you don't have to give the low mark, just give us the constructive criticism and we'll make adjustments from there. I agree. I love that. Yeah. I love that. We like like the feedback. We want it. We do, but (laughs) we want it. We want to get better. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just consider that when you're, when you're doing it and Thank you, as always. And Maria Manon, I can't say my own name. <laughs> Didn't she just say in the thing, you can't say your own name? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> MariaManunos.com, shop page, friends, everything that's there is stuff that I have, that I love, that I'm obsessed with. I wish I could share. We're trying to figure out how to do this where I can share exactly why I love everything because I know having the context really helps. Um, but we're getting there. In the meantime, check it out. Uh, We also have the Life Hacks blogs there that will help you with the aha moments, the takeaways from every episode like this. They go into those blogs and they're there for you to make you be able to have a carefree listen, whether you're hiking, jogging on the treadmill, doing whatever it is. um, You can go back and get those major aha takeaways, print them out, hang them on your fridge or whatever, wherever you need them. In the meantime, thank you as always for being with us on this journey. We love you. Be nice people, make good choices, and be present.